Hi, this is Tikva from Homeopathy for Humanity, resuming our aphorism, uh, going through the aphorisms of the sixth edition of the Organon. Today, we are going through aphorisms 26 and 27. Okay. 26 is very important aphorism. Hi, everyone. I am uh, Sanjay Solonke from uh, from India, and uh, today we are here back again on uh, organ of uh, uh, medicine, aphorism number twenty six. So this is very important aphorism. As uh, last time uh, we have mentioned from uh, 25, Hanuman has began to elaborate the principles of homeopathy. Do you have anything to say, Tikwa? Well, we have our book. Anything introductory? No, we're going to go through aphorism 26 today. Yeah. It is about uh, law of nature. He begins to explain all principles of homeopathy in accordance to uh, law of nature. It's uh, Includes everything, every sciences, every even quantums. So he basically explains those logics, which probably uh, something might uh, modern science cannot explain. Yeah, modern science is always changing. There are so many new changes. They had a theory about Alzheimer's disease that they just refuted with science saying that there was bogus trial material and that the very expensive medications they've been giving people for the last number of years was not useful in any way due to corrupted trial, which is very disappointing. And they still have no idea what causes it, but yet, if they were to use the homeopathic signs and symptoms, that is a law of nature. And we don't need to go spend, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars doing research on, on laboratory animals and, and in petri dishes in order to understand what needs to be treated. Let me read aphorism 26 for a minute. This depends on the following homeopathic law of nature, which was sometimes indeed vaguely surmised but not hitherto fully recognized and to which it is due every real cure that has ever taken place so there's been hints to there being a homeopathic law of nature a weaker dynamic affection is permanently extinguished in the living organism by a stronger one if the latter while differing in its kind, that means not isopathically, is very similar to the former in its manifestation. Here Hahnemann's telling us that similars is a law of nature. Not same, but similar. A weaker dynamic disease, a weaker dynamic disease, is extinguished in the living body by a stronger but very similar medicine. And there's been a lot of information about this in quote unquote folk medicine, you know, folk cures. Um, there are lots, have... lots of, lots of uh, examples we can give on this aphorism just to understand this logic. The simple fact the weaker dynamic affection is permanently extinguished in the living being by a stronger one. 
and uh, what is most uh, important factor when former is a similar in its character in a simple way and a really interesting facet of this is by the stronger now when hahnemann says stronger he doesn't mean material dose he means dynamically stronger which is extremely important we need the dynamic strength to overcome the natural beauty. How we can explain or understand this uh, law of nature in from our day-to-day uh, -day examples? Well, one would be treating burns with heat or with other things that cause heat or inflammation. Or for example, you know how people put, um, you know, those mentholated um, capsicum creams on painful areas? That's a heat cream that then goes on the inflamed muscle. So that's actually providing somewhat of a cure because you have the heat meeting up with the heat, right? Oh, half my Lego examples are gone. No, no, I'm, I'm just trying to uh, tell something uh, different from day to day examples. We can understand this law. That's what I was trying to do too, Sanjay. I was going to use some Legos to show how things match up. Go ahead. Yeah. So we can take lots and lots of uh, examples. We can have uh, like uh, from uh, a noisy place. We cannot hear or talk in a whisper way in the noisy place. Because where the sound character, what we call, the, uh, what we speak, and uh, the sound character of the surrounding, if it is more we can, our sound is inaudible or inunderstandable. Oh, do you know what you're doing? You're reading the footnote. You're just going off the footnote here. Okay, I got it. We're talking. Yeah, just, uh, yeah is it? Yes, this is the footnote, Sanjay, that you're talking about about how is it that in the early dawn, the brilliant Jupiter vanishes from the gaze of the beholder by a stronger, very similar power acting on the optic nerve, the brightness of the approaching day, right? So he's giving an example where the sun is brighter than Jupiter, therefore Jupiter is occluded from the vision as the sun rises. We see the exactly. same thing with Venus at night. Venus is there with us, but it has to be a dark night in order for Venus to show. But the moon is not stronger and therefore it doesn't occlude it. Even a small candle at night will light up the whole room. But mm -hmm. that cannot be, candle, be uh, candle light could be useless in the daylight. The light here is the character, which is yes. similar. So the stronger one will permanently dominate or distinguish the weaker one when its character is similar. Similar in the sound waves, we can see similar in the light. And uh, it's when there is a different character, see, you have a very bright light and you have very strong sound. Both will be coming in the same intensity. They will not have any effect even on dynamically on each other. Says some very so, character, so character should be similar to have an a effect on each other. But it needs to be stronger. Yeah, yeah.
Yeah, that is like more important. You can go with the footnote now. Well, you were already explaining the footnote already. Would you like to read the footnote? No, if the, we read here, people will be understanding. I like the way he says here, the injurious consequences of too great a joy will be removed by drinking coffee, which right. produces an excessively joyous state of mind. Nations like the Germans who have for centuries been gradually sinking deeper and deeper in soulless <laughs> apathy and degrading serfdom must first be trodden still deeper in the dust by the Western conqueror until their situation became intolerable. Their mean opinion of themselves was thereby overstrained and removed. They then again became alive to their dignity of men and then for the first time, they raised their heads as Germans and then catastrophe struck. <laughs> <laughs> wow, terrible okay yeah because this was written during the you know the 1860s before the first world war and before the second world war so before world war that would be it was um, before the, world war yeah this would be like during the napoleonic times you know, Napoleon came in from France and he conquered all the way up to Russia, just decimating everything in his wake. And in that way, Napoleon got rid of the uh, aristocracy and kings and brought in a new era. And this is part of the enlightenment that Hahnemann is part of where people have responsibility for themselves as opposed to relying on a king or a nobleman. So yes, yeah, but I think that that footnote is <laughs> really telling. Because... Yeah, and then he also talks about um, no music, no sugar cake, no act on the nerves of other senses can cure olfactory disgust. And he says the soldier cunningly stifles the cries of those who run the gauntlet from the ears of the compassionate bystanders by the shrill notes of the fife, commingled with the roll of the nosy drum, noisy drum. So he's giving examples. A real time examples of light overpowering light. And even sound. Mm -hmm. Sound, light. Hmm. That's what I was also uh, trying to uh, tell. This is about a nature's law, basically, a nature's law. And uh, further on to Aphorism 27. He tries to explain the medicine, medicinal uh, action on the similar symptoms. Mm -hmm. A law of similars. Shall I read that aphorism? Yeah. Okay. The aphorism 27. The curative power of medicines, therefore, depends on their symptoms, similar to the disease, but superior to it in strength. And he refers us to aphorisms 12 through 20. So that each individual case of disease is most surely, radically, rapidly, and permanently annihilated. Annihilated means killed. Removed. Yes, but annihilated means more than just removed. Killed is annihilated. Like the total everything is annihilation. The removal of everything is more than just like this place. Only by a capable medicine capable of producing in the human system, not in the system of 
laboratory animal, but in a human system, in the most similar and complete manner, the totality of its symptoms, which at the same time are stronger than the disease. So in order to, here we need the most similar remedy, capable of producing the most similar symptoms, which is proven in healthy people, not in petri dishes, not in laboratory animals, but in people themselves, in the greatest totality of unusual symptoms in a dynamically stronger strain. Yeah. The problem with that work. is the problem with that is that people, let's say today, um, would be afraid to be the provers because it's just like they would think of it like being, you know, like being experimented on just like with the COVID vaccine. How do you explain that? Well, uh, I could say homeopathic proving is voluntary. It's not like uh, proving, uh, experimenting like COVID. Most of the time in the present day, we see people uh, try to prove the drugs on the those individuals or people, even the people won't know they they have been. Uh, uh, what do you call guinea pig? Well, right, like some get some get placebo and some get the the actual medicine. Yeah, but they do is, volunteer for, but they still do volunteer to be in that kind of an experiment. Yeah, 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 yeah. That well, is uh, that I is a research. Like, I would say that the critical factor here is the situation is that when people are given medicine in potency for proving, they're not going to become you know, permanently harmed, as is the potential in using strong medicinal substances. Almost everybody that engages in approving, after a little while, any symptoms that they get from taking the dynamic medicine dissipate. They will have certain symptom for a time being, and they will go by itself. They don't have to take any other medicine. It's not like for other pro uh, means uh, uh, other system. They uh, prove the drug or any medicine. They don't. First of all, they don't prove on the human beings. Because don't, they know that it's dangerous. And whenever they do prove on human beings, they will do a secret mission. Yeah, sometimes when they're withholding medication that might potentially be life-saving. I have a really strong philosophical problem with this um, double-blind controlled uh, trial, you know? I have a real problem with it. If somebody's seriously ill and they're going to give one person medicine that they know it's medicine, but they're going to withhold any treatment from the other person, how is that morally acceptable? Interesting. And now this aphorism is about law of similar. 25th is law of nature. It's universal law of nature. A universal law, it applies on every substance in the universe. It applies in overall in the nature, in the universe. So, it's called, uh, named as universal law of nature. 
and then he tried to explain the law of similars in homeopathy in aphorism 27 the well proven medicine on the healthy human being whatever totality it has has ability to cure a similar disease right what are now? Okay. Hello, sir. Hi. Sir, in 26 of Marism, a weaker dynamic affection is permanently extinguished by the stronger one. Wheels differing in kind. What is the meaning of wheels differing in kind, sir? It means it's not isopathic. It means that it's a similar medicine, but not the same medicine. Means you cannot take, uh, like, isopathic. It should be, a, uh, what do you call, uh, I cannot give a right example. Tikwa, can you give? I said the most similar medicine, not the same medicine. It's saying that it has to be a similar and not a same. No, 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 no. Wireless, wireless, differing in kind, differing in kind. Yeah, different type of medicine. Yeah. Different types of medicines. And in our uh, a light from one source and light from another source. It will have a difference and uh, even in the sound. Uh, sound example, we can say a sound from a guitar and a sound from uh, uh, Ganesh Chaturthi, DJs. You will see that the means uh, the source of origin is different, not from the same thing. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. That it has to be similar, not the same. So if somebody has taken too much belladonna, we don't give them more belladonna to get rid of the symptoms from taking too much belladonna. We use something that's going to give them a similar situation. If people have drunk too much coffee, we're not going to give them more coffee. We're going to give them something else that's going to cover the symptoms. It's about similar, but not same. Okay. And that's why he gives all those different things about one sound canceling out another sound, about the light of Jupiter. Once it becomes daytime, the sun makes it so we can't see Jupiter anymore. And on and on and on with various things that are similar, but not the same. Yeah. So that's all for these aphorisms. There is a lot more to learn in the next couple of our aphorisms. I think we should uh, make a summary uh, what we learn in the groups. If you'd like to put that together, that'd be great. I will try. I will try to make the summary. Of which group? All aphorisms means what's been explained in that group of aphorism. Oh, in that group of aphorisms. Oh, I didn't understand you at all. I thought you meant to make a summary of what happens in the various telegram and WhatsApp group. 
No, 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 no not those group, group aphorisms. Hmm. I already have the start of that. I already have a very nice arrangement uh, with the subject yeah, matter. Yeah, you can call it outline of our I have an, We have an outline already. Do you remember it? Yeah. Would you like to okay. add to that outline? No, no, what to add? We just have to take that outline on the video so people can come and look at that outline. Okay. Okay, Vijay Lakshmi, any other questions? Yes, sir, but not related to this organon. Uh, I have another doubt relating to chronic diseases, but here we are discussing about uh, Argran, so I didn't ask. Go ahead. Okay. In page number 139, Dr. Hanuman mentioned that sucklings never receive medicines. Only yeah. mother or wet nurse receive the medicine. Mm -hmm. Here my doubt is, uh, our medicine works uh, through dynamic plane. Mm -hmm. uh, here we are not giving, not discussing about material dose. Then for sucklings, if we give medicine for mother, if she is healthy, if we give our medicine through milk, that means I am thinking that, uh, that uh, medicine works through milk only. That may how this material here we are giving in dynamic form how this material type of medicine will dissolve in the milk and how it goes to child and a newborn baby. Oh well, see, since the medicine is dynamic, it's going it to goes everywhere. It's the going whole, in. the whole woman is going to receive the milk. Now, something that I have from experience is that many, many, many times if an infant isn't well, the mother needs the same medicine. So this happens to be a side thingy that isn't mentioned by Hahnemann, but I've noticed it in clinical practice that, for example, if a baby needs Ignatia or a baby needs aconite, that generally the mother does too. So you know, there's a lot of connection between mother and child at that stage and throughout life, of course, but there's a really special connection with a nursing baby. So the mother takes the medicine and the mother receives it and it goes dynamically through their milk into the baby as well. And we don't really see any provings in the mothers because we're dosing very gently in water. I've never seen anything negative happen to a nursing mother who has taken medicine that a baby has. Okay. Okay, thank you. But since it's all dynamic, it's not material. It's not about the material. Dynamic, uh, dynamic is, is something like you just switch on the la lights and the whole room will be illuminated. It's Sandy, same. The, what's your experience with giving nursing mothers baby um, the milk, the medicine? Madam? No, no, no. I haven't uh, prescribed in a such uh, that uh, small infants. Okay, but nursing children often children often. But I can I can explain. Control. I know, but I I'm asking explain. you a question. I'm asking you a question about your clinical experience because clinical experience is important. So you have a baby that's nursing. The baby's going to be nursing until they're one years old, two years old, three years old. You've never given the nursing mother the medicine? No, I have given, but not to an infant who is just uh, still uh, suckling. Okay, so in, uh. in where you live, babies that are one year old or two year old or three year old don't still suckle? One year or uh, rarely one and a half? 
So most people stop suckling by one year? They don't stop. They voluntarily. That means stopping. Stopping, yeah. Voluntarily not doing it anymore means stopping. And so I'm asking hmm. you, you have never given medicine to the nursing mother? Yeah, I have given medicine. Okay, and what is who the- Who have babies. Who have babies, but I haven't given medicine to mother and the baby at the same time. So you've never done exactly what Hahnemann says here in the chronic diseases? No. Ah, well, you're going to have to try, start that. You're going to have to try it. So, yeah. Because you know what? If we're going to be reviewing all this stuff and learning all this stuff, we might as well implement it into our practice. Right. And I, my, my experience is, is that the mother and the baby often need the same medicine, which is very interesting. That, that, can be, that could be sure uh, when baby is infant. But uh, Madam, sometimes. Is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, carry answer. No, no, you, you go on with the question. Sometimes uh, baby uh, doesn't need any medicine. Only if mother is suffering with other uh, other disease, that means uh, after uh, after parturition, after delivery, she may get hemorrhoids. She may get suture pains. All these things will be there. For them, we are giving medicine for mother. Even though suckling newborn uh, is there, yeah. we are giving medicine. That med then even though baby here, newborn baby is healthy, that medicinal power will indirectly acts on the newborn also. Sure. hundred percent. Yeah. And, sure. um, you know, I, I very frequently give mothers who have just given birth, I frequently give them Arnica. And if you think about the baby's experience in the birth process, you can see how that arnica might help the baby as well. No, no, no. What is her question is that if the mother is having some other issues. Yeah, the baby's some getting other issue. Issue. And fine. mother is getting, uh, uh, no, uh, yeah, anything, any other issue. She coming up with the, some issues and she is getting medicine. That medicine indirectly also going to the baby. Which has never and, been. Uh, will, will that baby show any symptoms? Though no, that will not, it will get the medicine, but that will not give any symptom to baby. I haven't seen any problem with it at all. But yes, yeah. of course, the, the he receives the medicine that the mother needs. And I've never seen any negative problem from that. But it, sometimes it can be very positive. But for okay. sure, the, if the baby is sick, that time in infancy, you can give medicine to a baby that can, sorry, uh, to mother, and that would cure the whatever symptom baby the infant has. Okay. Then what is the what is this wet nurse, sir? Wet nurse, sir. Here, through mother, uh, through milk, Mother, uh, uh, mother makes medicine action to baby. How wet nurse gives, uh, what is the word, transport that medicinal quality to uh, newborn? See, it's dynamically 
goes to all uh, lesions or all the parts in the body of the mother, even in the milk. And uh, milk is physically sucked by the infant. The, and the intensity of the dynamic is even low when it is in the milk and baby is taking the milk. That would not have the same effect, whatever the effect the mother is getting from direct medicine. The milk the baby is sucking could give or remove only that symptom. So only that, uh, it is very gent gentle effect. It will uh, not produce any other symptoms other than the, uh, the altered one. Yes, sir. So, it's uh, just about how the, the, the medicine moves in the all cells of the body, of the mother. It's going into the milk and it's just like just contaminating the milk with the medicine. Yeah, for example, okay. if a woman has mastitis and you need to give phytolacca, you know, the child might be two years old, might be three years old. Well, where we live, I mean, people are encouraged to feed their child until they're two. And uh, you wanna, often we see, uh, often we see when mother is having some issue or a fever or something like that, and then uh, the babies also become sick from drinking, uh, suckling the milk from Do a they? sick mother. Yeah, but the mother's milk has antibodies in it that help prevent sickness in a baby. I have almost never seen a nursing baby come down sick with a sick mother that's nursing. Because as the mother is getting better from their illness, they're producing antibodies to go into the milk and prevent illness in the baby. What kind of diseases are you talking about? No, no, I'm just talking about uh, active illness like f infection or fever or something like oh, that. My. Yeah, my experience is, is that a nursing bear, a baby rarely comes down with an influenza or a digestive ailment or, you know, an infection, even, okay, let's say that you have a woman that has mastitis. She's even going to have pus in her milk and the baby is not going to get sick from drinking that milk. The baby's going to remain healthy because the body is making, the woman, the mother is making antibodies for the illness to protect the baby at the same time she's producing milk. There are so many incredible components to breast milk <clears throat> that people just like, they don't really think about or really understand. And then they think that things <clears throat> like, uh, you know, formula, I don't know what you call that in India, <clears throat> You know, that powder that people mix with water, they think of that as a substitute for breast yeah. milk, but it's not a substitute for breast milk because there are no immune factors in it. And breast milk changes, <coughs> you know, day by day, hour by hour. It will even change if a woman has twins and she feeds one baby and then the other, the milk will be different to suit the needs of each twin as an individual. So, I mean, breast milk is absolutely miraculous. And like I said, I've never seen a child get sick when the mother's been sick who's been breastfeeding because of yeah. those antibodies that are in the woman's milk. I mean, it can protect against, you know, things like pertussis personal, um, all different kinds of things that the mother has had throughout their lifetime. There's antibodies that are going to be in the, in the breast milk. Very, very important to breastfeed. Yeah. 
okay sir thank you okay we will conclude here because uh, we have our canon and we are going into the chronic disease that's okay i'll make an annotation in the uh, youtube so that people know that there is a discussion on this topic as well which is a very very important topic and i appreciate yeah. you bringing this up yeah thank you madam thank you I love a good question. Okay. So yes, breast milk has the dynamic energy of medicine in it, whether or not you're giving it to the mother or you're intending it to the child, but I've never seen any bad reaction happen from this. But then again, we're supposed to be very careful with our dosing, dosing in water, never using a dry dose, making sure that there's a slight change in each redose and only redosing when necessary. Okay. Okay. We will stop here. Yeah, thank you everybody for watching, joining. Yeah. You need to stop recording. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Don't worry. I'm going to stop recording.